Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How are you today? We're really lucky because we've got Tracy Blythe. She's been a naturopath for the last 17 years, and she runs an incredible course for practitioners. And um, she's agreed to come on the podcast and have a chat to us and tell us all about what she does, about her practice and her clients, but also about this prescribing course, which she presents to pharmacists and naturopaths and nutritionists and all of us so that we learn more about the contraindications and what goes on when we take medicines and supplements and herbs. So um, it's great to have you here, Tracy. Thank you very much for coming on. And uh, please tell us a bit about yourself and what you're up to. Ah, Thank you so much for having me, Geraldine. I um, really appreciate the opportunity to talk to your Um, listeners uh, about all this stuff because it's certainly what I have a huge passion for. Um, I I graduated a long time ago as a naturopath and have worked in health food stores, in pharmacies, in clinic. I spent a long time working for a supplement brand where in that time I did lots of different jobs as well from, from a rep through to education, through to senior management. And it was during that time that I realized that practitioners across the board, a couple of things I realized. One, that practitioners across the board, there was a big disconnect between pharmacists knew lots about the drugs, us naturopaths know lots about the complementary medicines, but there's this gap, this space in the middle um, that we're all trying to work towards, but where it's it it was it's hard to bring together. Um, the other side of what I learned, uh, particularly with working in clinical practice, um, is that the patients that come to clinical practice and will pay for consultations are very different. There's a whole other subset of people that are looking for in a health food store and pharmacy for that practitioner-led um, advice for free. Um, and that there's when there's that big gap in the market of someone sitting down going through their bloods, that there's that gap there. So after many years, about a year ago, I left the supplement company and decided to fill that gap. Um, so back, well, first of all, back into clinical practice, which is incredible. I'm having a wonderful time at a, at a clinic here in Perth um, with some other naturopaths as well. There's, there's a big team of six. So it's lovely working with a bunch of like-minded people. Um, yeah. But I've also developed a course um, and that course is called the Co-Prescriber. And it's where at each module or each webinar once a month that then joins the, joins the course, I take one drug and I take the practitioner, whether it's a naturopath, nutritionist, a pharmacist, take that practitioner from understanding the basics about that drug. I talk about all the nutrient depletions. I talk about all the safety contraindications and side effects, and then also the complementary medicines that will help to improve the outcome for that patient. Um, and it's all from an evidence-based perspective. Um, and that has been what I've been doing for the last six months now. Brilliant. So when you say the drug, I assume you're meeting the group of drugs, like you're talking about statins, you're not talking about a specific drug. It's Mm -hmm. a group that are within that one. So you might be talking about PPIs or statins Mm -hmm. or whatever Mm -hmm. it is. And then we can really understand what's going on with our nutrient depletion, as we know there is with PPIs and we know there is with statins. So those are the two that pop to mind. I'm sure you've done those already in your course. (laughs) That uh, PPIs is actually in three weeks' time. <laughs> PPIs is in three weeks' time. We've been not say three weeks' time. So PPI, what's the date of that one? Because uh, the date of that one is the third of November. Third of November. Yeah. So um, all Tracy's info will actually be in the show notes, so that you can contact her and you can get on the list, so that we can watch that in. Um, later on in the month so because obviously we're batching today we've got to go through a load of processes and then we get the podcast out so <laughs> mm-hmm. so in practice who was your niche client who was it that you like to see when you're in practice yeah, is it the people so- who've got who need all these you know are taking all these drugs is that you know part of it having this complex caseload yeah so it's in in practice who i see mostly is is a uh, women or who are, uh, I see women of, I see people of any age. Um, I actually have a, a few children clients, but in terms of niche, uh, it actually has become uh, women with hormone problems. And with that, particularly women, say 30, 35 plus. Um, so definitely some younger women and, and women with trying to conceive and, and, and those sorts of things. But where the complexity comes in when it comes to hormone problems, as we know, um, with leading into perimenopause and menopause, it's, it's not necessarily that they've got hormone problems. Perhaps it's more they've got liver processing problems. Perhaps it's more they've got digestive problems. Um, And then layering on that, my experience with those women is that there is blood pressure, there is cholesterol, there is other stuff that is just 
you know, sometimes it doesn't even make it to the list of you. Are you on any prescribed medications? It's on my intake form and often it's empty. And then I'll ask the question again. The answer is no. And then when we get talking about a few things, oh, oh yeah, I take a, take a pill for that. Oh, I just take that every day though. That's just, that's just, I don't know what it's called. And then they'll look it up. And go, oh yeah, it's a statin. And these are just, it's just so background to a lot of people. They don't, they don't often think to say it, even in a consult. Uh, it has to be sometimes pried out of people. Yeah, especially the um, hormonal ones, say when they're on the pill, because they've been taking it every day since they were 14, so they forget to put it on the form. Mm-hmm. I've had all sorts. I had um, one bloke forget to put his epileptic medication on the form. I mean, now what are, if you haven't asked these things and you're not really into making sure you've grasped all this information, that's a huge contraindication, epileptic <laughs> medication, but of course he's been taking it since he was four. So, yeah. you know, and he gets checked every so often when he remembers he'll make an appointment and you know and oh he forgets it sometimes and but that seems to be okay and it was just like this totally random you know I worked with a naturopath and um she forgot to take her thyroxine she has no thyroid and Mm. she's like oh I was wondering why I was feeling down and of course I forgot to take my thyroxine and these are the people because you've been taking something for such a long period of time you Mm. forget it's part of your life it's like eating dinner and drinking water or whatever it is and you forget that yeah, actually, that's a medication, and we need to know about that because there's huge contraindications that go with mm-hmm. these medications. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's and, true. and it really affects how we treat them. So and bad. by really understanding the medications and the nutrient contra- contraindications, can really affect what we're prescribing nutritionally as well, doesn't it? Just mm-hmm. with our basic foods. Mm-hmm. If they're low on zinc, and we're giving them a zinc we can also make sure they're having seeds and nuts to get the zinc as well. And that's all part of, if you've got some, a medication that's making it hard to uptake something, you might need to add more in food along with the digestive processes. Definitely. Because what I have uncovered with, there's the ones we know quite well. Um, you know, I think of some of the, the, the B vitamins that we might be aware of with a number of different drugs. Um, and then there's a number of, you know, CoQ10 and, and, uh, and statins is, is the common one. But there are just so many nutrient depletions that are actually in the evidence. If we pull it apart, zinc came up way more often than I expected it to. Um, but then when, because what it's catching is, you know, the list of side effects, nausea, um, indigestion, heartburn, gourd, all these side effects of different medications um, are, are, are well documented because they have to be, but the you have to go digging a little to, to, to find the data on, on zinc depletion and yeah. that if we replete the body in zinc, and this is because it's over time, you do a, you do a six-week study, put somebody on metformin for six weeks um, and then have a look at serum zinc levels, you don't see a huge difference. But how many people get put on metformin for six weeks? Um, yeah. So go talk to them after a year, two years, three years, and they're suffering with chronic digestive problems um, that then that's when the naturopath be looking to fix it and, and quite commonly you'd be looking to looking at zinc but and understanding why is this person low in zinc what are they they're eating all these the right things in their diet um, they're doing the right things in terms of not grazing all the day and all that kind of thing what what's going on you know and then you look at the look at the culprit uh, and and it's and it's also there's an entourage there's never just one it's uh, no. it's always there's always a team <laughs> always a team and you know once sometimes some of the medications like ppis then they'll start on a ppi then they move to the next one then they move to the next one then they move to the next one it's just one drug after another drug after another drug and you can bring it all back to either the statin or the ppi most of the time Mm -hmm. and um and it's like these medications have all kept increasing because of it that's rather than dealing with the underlying problem. The only one I find in practice that can be a standalone medication and they're on it forever, it's for high blood pressure. Yeah, yeah. And that doesn't make anything else happen. It doesn't have these side effects of bad guts so immediately, you know, mm-hmm. you put on a, a PPI or immediately you put on a statin. You can just mm-hmm. be on blood pressure tablets yeah. and that's all you'll be on mm-hmm. and save your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what I was going to add is the statistics on, I, I've done a lot of deep diving over the last six months in statistics around, so what, how I chose the drugs I'm, I'm doing, it's based on the statistics around the most commonly prescribed drugs, the most commonly taken drugs. Mm-hmm. Six of the top 10 is, uh, is actually um, blood pressure pills uh, because yep. there are just so many. Yeah. And the, the thing with blood pressure pills is, is, is an interesting one in that a lot of people 
start with one, but then they get another added on and, and things. So that pathway is quite different to, to others. And that pathway ends up because it's more of a, a kidney, a kidney yes. thing than, than is liver liver digestion. Um, but that the rates of uh, you know, in, in different drug groups, it's 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 different across with where you live. So if you're a practitioner out in the in the country, the outer regions and the countries, you're going to see far greater use of certain medications than you will if you're an inner city uh, practitioner, because it's just the statistics are like um, you know three or four times that for or and same as if your patients are older patients. Um, yes. The polypharmacy, the number of people in Australia who are over fifty five and taking three or more prescribed medications a day, that is more likely than not for your patients walking in the door. Absolutely. Absolutely. Polypharmacy is huge. Yeah. And um, and getting people off medications, obviously we've got, um, we have to work with the, the person who's prescribed the medication. We can't take anybody off a medication and we need to work together to replete them. Mm -hmm. And once we've repleted those basics, then we can start working with the prescriber to mm -hmm. remove some of those medications and yeah. support the kidneys. I mean, always supporting the kidneys and the blood pressure and things like that. So this is part of your course, isn't it? This is, you know, these monthly webinars helping mm -hmm. us with all of these medications and, um, and the nutrient depletions and what to do and it, it's amazing that nobody's thought of this before and yet it's something that we all you know there's always questions in the groups people are always asking about research I recently did a webinar on um, using research in practice so it's something that's asked about a lot so it's amazing that we finally have someone who's sitting down with all of these medications and going okay what is it we all need to know on both sides of the coin the pharmacists that everybody along the chain needs to know Right. that's my goal is to bring that like i said that gap that i saw where on one side of the um of the coin is the is the pharmacy the other side is the complementary medicine practitioner is bring us all together um in striving for the best health for the patients that's that's my you know something i learned about back in health fixer and pharmacy days 15 17 years ago all those years ago that there were just these patients that um if they're only getting their advice from the pharmacist that i I, I, my goal is that pharmacists will know how to help their patients, um, know their scope of practice to, to prescribe to a naturopath. Flip side, that the naturopath knows to raise the standards for all of us. Um, we know that there are varying standards. All the, all the new grades that are out, it's, it's very different. But a lot of us from the olden days have taken different paths and different turns that we, we're all raised together with this common common knowledge because the other thing as well, the answers to all this isn't in one place. Um, it's not like I go to one website to find the answer. Uh, to bring these together there is an essential hub and my goal i've got lots of big long-term goals one of my big long-term goals is to have a central hub for us all yeah yeah i'd be great to have that information so that we've all got that information in the one place so that's incredible yeah. so um right well this is the bite-sized podcast so <laughs> i am going to let you go and get on with your busy day i know you've got clients to see and i have as well so mm -hmm. thank you so much tracy for sharing um, all about you and your course with us and of course in the show notes everyone there will be how to find tracy um, out in the world and she'll be sharing this as well and we'll hope to see you again perhaps on the podcast um, in the future wonderful thank you so much for having me geraldine i really appreciate it thanks a lot <laughs>